bitch be gone. What's up YouTube? It's your girl Amber Smiles Jones. Welcome back to my channel Professionally Silly where I take my silliness seriously. Today we're gonna talk about fake friends. We're gonna talk about lies. Okay, we're gonna talk about backstabbing that's what we're gonna talk about. I haven't done a story time, or what I would like to call it, what had happened was, because I'm fire as fuck. I'm gonna go ahead and change the name of this person, okay, because I don't want y'all bothering him. But since he's acting like a stereotypical white girl, I'm gonna give him a stereotypical white girl name. His name is now Brittany. Brittany. So before we go ahead and get into this juicy this, uh, this scolding hot tea that I'm about to Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Give your girl some of that like love by clicking that thumbs up button. It only takes literally about like two seconds. Boop, done. And not even two seconds. Look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and let you in on a little secret, okay? If you click that notification bell, you'll definitely be notified when I post my weekly videos. I mean, you can't really trust YouTube to tell you. Look at what they've been doing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. First, let me start off by saying that he was not always a fake friend. This is something that <laughs> he put time into becoming this fake person. Beginning of the story, we actually met each other in middle school. He was actually my second boyfriend. My first boyfriend was in the sixth grade. His name was Ryan. My second boyfriend was in the eighth grade. His name, now Brittany. Oh! Uh, Brittany and I became like, we were like best friends first and we decided to try to date. We had a we had a connection, but we we mistook it for something else. As time passes by, my mom and his mom were kind of like, not, I wouldn't say friends, more like associates. Kind of like they spoke to each other because their children were friends, that type of relationship. But mind you, this is someone that I have trusted since middle school. And I understand as, we, as people get older, as we have experiences in life, it changes our character. It molds us to who we're going to be when we're older. But I didn't get that when I was younger. I always thought Britney was going to be Britney. You know what I'm saying? After high school, we lost touch because I ended up going to college in Savannah, Georgia, and Brittany went up to New York to do his thing. We kept in contact because, you know, Facebook was a thing, call, text, and all that, because we'd known each other since middle school. It just felt like a connection that was supposed to stay there. And the thing that kind of pisses me off the most is because when I say secrets, he was like one of the first people I came out to. This was like in high school. I trusted him with my secrets. I trusted him with my dreams. I trusted him with my future. I trusted him with my thoughts. I trusted him with me. When I give someone the title of friend, you've earned that. I don't just throw that word away. People just use the word friend and love a little too much. They're just ruining the true meaning of it. You can't just throw sacred words like that around. That's just how I feel. So when I said that he went to New York and I went to Savannah, Georgia for school, he got into like a weird crowd. I'm not gonna spill his tea because that's his business but his experience changed the man that I that I grew to know and love I don't know what the happened to him honestly I really don't once we connected again after college I was depressed as I didn't know what I wanted to do I was so used to having a schedule like he was a good friend even in college I got a degree in performing arts so I was a theater major I put on shows I did background work I built sets I was on stage behind camera I was doing it all I was learning I did this show this play for color girls who consider suicide when the rainbow is enough I was lady in purple and he actually drove up with my mom and my dad and uh, my uncle and they all drove up to see my show now Savannah is four hours away from Atlanta and if my dad was driving it probably took like eight <laughs> sorry dad but seriously you drive really slow oh yeah that's a big thing I mean he joined my family for a four-hour ride to see me for a weekend that's a big thing after I graduated college I was really depressed I didn't know what to do in my life I didn't know how to start getting my adulthood I guess started the next chapter the career that I've chosen in, in entertainment is well, it's hard, it's not easy. It's constant rejection, constantly building and trying to change and it's constant work. It's a full-time job chasing a dream, it really is. And when you're chasing it, you're not getting paid, at least not yet, so it's hard, you know. This is at the very beginning of all of that dream chasing, so I didn't know what to do with myself. I was actually a dog groomer at PetSmart. You know, I was washing dogs, I was working the register at PetSmart, I was living with my parents. Then Brittany decided to come through. He had this bright idea, let's move to Los Angeles. Let's chase our dreams together because he wanted dreams that were similar to mine. He wanted to do modeling and acting. And I wanted to do similar things, minus the modeling. We had this bright idea, he's gonna go down to Los Angeles first. 
and you know get us an apartment you know and then I would come a few months later so I could save up a little bit more money I ended up going down there a little sooner than we expected he got us both a studio apartment it was really small for two people let me tell you something it was small things were okay but I was still depressed because I was having a hard time finding a job once I finally got to Los Angeles eventually I ended up finding a job as a bartender at this club called uh, Jules Catch One and I was making pretty good money sometimes I would come home with hundreds of dollars in tips plus the check that they gave us I was doing okay I was still saving I was giving him money and I would always buy groceries which by the way Brittany always drank all my juice never and replaced it I just want to go ahead and say that I don't mind if you drink it all, but replace or at least tell me. So when I'm ready to have my juice, I know where it is. You know what I'm saying? Hello? It's only fair. I'm just saying. I remember at one point things got really strange because I was just say I was talking to somebody. We hadn't met yet at that point. He was adamant that I was being catfished or whatnot, which I was not, but he just assumed that I was. He decided to, I guess, exchange numbers with her and then they became friends, which was okay with me, but then, I don't know, somehow there was a miscommunication or something because I think that he liked her. I'm almost positive that he did. So he thought that I said something about him to her behind his back, which I didn't. I don't do the he said, she said thing. If you think I did or said something, come to me and let me know. Don't ask other people. That's exactly why he got the name Brittany because he does that middle school girl bull He be doing that for years. Petty ass When I leave, you wanna keep doing this. But then when I come around, you don't wanna post up. So, how, how, how about you just say it to my face the things you've been saying about me? So anywho, later on, he decided to get physical with me because of what he thought that I said, which I never fucking said. You know those flat noodles you can get from like Walmart or whatever that cost like $1.09 come with shrimp flavor, teriyaki chicken, whatever. It was a chicken one that he had. It was fresh hot out the microwave. He threw that past my head. After that, got weird. It got hella real. After a while, I started to notice that the tip money that I was bringing home to save up, I'd be like, well, I thought I had this much. This was stealing from me. Now, I could not prove it, so I did not say anything. I don't blame people unless I have proof. I actually started to detail what I was bringing home, and then when I would count it when he wasn't there, it would not be the same amount that it was that I wrote down. Okay, so what would you... Is either him or one of his weird ass friends that he kept bringing into his apartment. There was this one dude that he kept bringing to the apartment who didn't wear shoes and he always smelled like yesterday's trash. After a while, he started talking about how people are talking about him behind his back and people are watching him. And it was really weird. It was starting to affect him. And I'm starting to think maybe that's why he thought that I said whatever the he thought I said to that girl. But I didn't say nothing. So I don't know what the talking about first of all I didn't feel safe living with him anymore simply because of him losing it and throwing a hot bowl of noodles past my face who the does that a bitch named Brittany that's who turns out the person who lived below us who was a, a mutual friend of ours was actually the the property manager for that particular building and turns out there was an opening for a property manager under the same company so I asked her if she could hook me up and see if we can get me this job so I can get out of this weird ass living situation that I was stuck in. So I ended up applying with my fucking resume. I had the interview, both of them. I got the job and I maintained it currently. We're talking about five years has passed since then. That's important for later. Oh, back it up, hold up. I forgot to mention, not only was he stealing money from me, but Brittany bitch was stealing money from my mom. He called my mom and said that I was not giving him any rent money. So my mom, thinking that I was too proud to ask for help, she knew how expensive it is to live in Los Angeles, so she was trying to do me a solid with, without embarrassing me. I'm a very proud person. I don't like to ask for help. I like to handle shit myself. And if I can't, sometimes I end up losing myself in the depression of that failure, and I still don't ask for help. That is something that I have to work on and I'm still currently working on even as an adult. But that 
pisses me off because she sent him $250. He didn't tell me about it. She didn't tell me about it. So I'm giving him money. He's stealing my money. And then he lies to my mother too. Oh, you are dead to me. Hence as to why I have no fucking problem talking about this with the smile squad. That's you guys, by the way. Mind you, I didn't even live with this mother for three months. Understand? I was like, boop. Bye, Brittany. Bye. That part about the money that I just told you, I just found that out last week when I told my mom about the Facebook message war or whatever that he was trying to start with me. Like a and Brittany would do? Yeah. My mom, we were discussing on how I thought he was stealing my money and I was giving him rent and you know, I know why he was doing that. And then she was like, oh, wait a minute, you were paying rent? And I said, yes. And then she told me that he called her and told her that I wasn't giving him any money and she sent him 250. Are you kidding me? This Brittany decided to steal money from my mother. You are dead to me. Our relationship is dead forever. Even though you technically called it off, I am so blessed that you did because with a friend like you, who the fuck needs enemies? Enemies. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna share with y'all those fucking messages too. This might be a two-parter, this fucking video. Damn, I might have to do that. Maybe a part three, we'll see. He's like, oh, I don't like you and you fake and blah, blah, blah. What? I said, I don't fucking like you. <laughs> you don't like me? No. If you don't like me, why are you still watching all of my You know why? Bitch, you a fan. Bitch, you a fan. I don't like you. But why are you watching all my This bitch stays looking at my social media. I, it's public. I don't block people. You want to stalk me, you go on ahead. That's your business. I'm grown. I have my life. I have my dreams. I'm chasing them. What you doing, Brittany? Girl, I was right. I'm about to make us a part two, maybe a three. Since we got a two-parter, we got two random word winners. Next random word winner is gonna be Queer by Nature NYC. Apples and blue cats. Girl, don't forget to click that subscribe button because I got some more tea to spill in part two.